everyone, I'm Natalie Manuel Lee, and I partner with my good friend, Dorian Renaud, who is the CEO and founder of Butterskin. We wanted to highlight the stories that continue to shape how we see ourselves, to shine a light on our inner beauty. Here is Beyond the Surface. so much for doing this. Of course. You, you are know phenomenal. You, girl. you are. Look at you. Thank you. Mom, wife, yes. My, all the girl. Business. You are a phenomenal actress, comedian. Uh, you, if we look at your resume, it's on, you have various TV shows, various films. You graduated from Cal Baltimore. Arts. Oh, we have Baltimore School, School, School for the Arts. Okay, take it back, yes. 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 How did you find your love for acting? You know, my love for acting came very early. Mm. I was one of those kids that was very vocal about what I wanted to do from a very early age. I've always known, mm -hmm. you know? Um, my parents always laugh and said that I always wanted to, I would say, I want to be in the TV. You would say, I want to be in the actual I TV. I want to be, I thought they were inside the How TV. How old are you? I had to be like four. Wow. And I was like, I want to be in the TV. Mm -hmm. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And they were like, Okay, and you know, we Baptists, so there's like, look at what the father is doing with her. You know, <laughs> like, so it was always, <laughs> how do we cater to that? And I'm, you know, my, both my parents were artists. Mm -hmm. My mom was a classically trained dancer. My father sang in church and would sing all over. So it wasn't odd to them sure. that I had a performer personality and wanted to be in front of the camera and do stuff. So I have known from a very early age and then I would say, I'm gonna be an Academy Award winning actress. So speaking it and doing it and just being uh, with a family that supported it right. was just monumental for me. Now, acting career is, is not an easy feat to, it's not, it's not an easy career <laughs> to actually embark on. Yeah. And with that comes a lot of transitions. Yeah. In, in that industry, from having a job to not having a job, mm -hmm. from getting that no to finally getting that yes, yeah. from one role to the next. And in, in some cases, transition definitely pulls out or can invite fear. Mm -hmm. It can invite doubt. It can invite uncertainty. How do you not or do you not partner with those things and accept those invitation of those things? I mean, those things come. Yeah. Okay, fear. It's common for any profession you want to have, but being an artist, committing to being an artist, that's a faith walk, a consistent faith walk. Mm -hmm. Even when you're at where you think you want to be, it's still consistently a faith walk. Um, and I commend that to my parents, um, the tribe that raised me. I was raised in the church. Um, so church was, you know, in God and just understanding the faith walk and understanding putting God first and understanding your purpose mm -hmm. was always in front of me. It was always, but really doing the faith walk, you have to put that in action mm -hmm. when it comes to doing this. You know, yeah. you have to say what you want and believe in yourself and believe that he will provide it yeah. also. But one thing I will say that I really commend my parents in taking the time for me to, you know, that they put me in was doing regional theater. Mm. I got to really meet and be around and socialize with other artists. Mm -hmm. You know, so my idea of acting was not glitz and glamor. It was not this thing that I was gonna become, you know, whoever, Whitney Houston. I was gonna be like a, you know, like just the glitz and glamor of it all, mm -hmm. you know? It wasn't like an instant success. I always remained humble because mm. I saw people who were humble to the process and to what it took to be an artist and what a gift it was mm -hmm. to be a true artist. And because of that, I think that has what has sustained me mm. and that has kept me really faith-based and in reality mm -hmm. of what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and 
what the reverence, like, like what it is. So you know? all of that is fantastic and that is what is needed. But mm-hmm. take me to a moment where you went out for a role. Mm-hmm. You really believe that it was for you. You really believe that, okay, God, I prayed for this. I believe and know that you're going to answer my prayer and you don't get it. And a girl that looks just like you mm-hmm. uh, books that role. Mm-hmm. How, what is your self dialogue? What's your self talk? Well, that's different for me. I know people get into this place of competition Mm -hmm. and like, why wasn't it me? I've always, and it doesn't happen to a lot of, because I've been auditioning my whole life, whether it was for theater or commercials or TV shows. I remember being, going um, (laughs) for an audition for the Bernie Mac show. And I was in Baltimore and my mom took off work to drive me to Virginia for like, the the callback or the producer session or something like that. And I just was like, this is the moment. I can be one of the leads of a show and this can take me on the trajectory, da 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 da. And I think that was the last time I felt like I put all of my eggs in the basket and that Mm. was all I had. And I was maybe like 14 or something like that. And I said, they will all see me and they will all know. And I didn't get it, it wasn't for me. But what it taught me was, and what my dad said to me, he said, if you can take a no now, you are believing for a yes that is actually for you. It is actually for you. Mm -hmm. So if you can accept this no, and I was heartbroken. Mm -hmm. He was like, you are believing for a yes. He's Mm -hmm. like, to be an artist is to know that no's come with it. Yeah. But to believe for a yes means that there is going to be a yes. How do you surrender to that? Because Mm -hmm. in reality, a lot of people don't have that faith muscle. They don't have Mm -hmm. that faith backbone. So what would you tell someone that is in a position where they've gotten nothing but no's? But knowing, knowing that they're called to be an actress, knowing that they're called to be a creative, but all they get is no after no after no after no. Well, I feel like, I mean, everyone's journey and walk is different. Mm -hmm. I can say all day, God told me to do this. You have to know it for yourself Mm -hmm. and always be open for what else is out there. You know, so if you're getting no in one area, ask yourself why. I kept getting no's in one area and I said, okay, I need to perfect this thing. I was humble enough to go get lessons. I was humble enough to go ask questions. I was humble enough to say, okay, let me shift myself. And God presented something to me in that moment that actually grew me Mm. into another area that I was able to focus on. So that energy wasn't being suspended in something that really was lacking in that moment. But I was putting my energy somewhere else. So when I was called to do something else in that moment, I got it. Because, you know, when you're putting all of your energy in one area, you're not getting what you want sometimes. Mm. And there has been moments like that. I remember (laughs) when I was first starting out, I worked at Costco. And I would sell samples, chicken sausage. (laughs) Costco, when? What what year? This was right after college. Okay. And I was booking, like, guest stars on Lifetime and... You know, I was the crying pregnant teenager on all the shows. Mm-hmm. So I would come in there, Lincoln Heights, like, you took my baby. You know, and it was so, <laughs> you know, it was shortly, you know, but it was all these dramatic roles. And I was coming to do one thing, stand there, cry about a baby and walk out, mm-hmm. you know. And after a while, I was just like, you know, those came once every so often after every audition you're going in when we were able to go in auditions and stuff. And I would go do my chicken sausage and sell that on the weekend, $17 an hour, okay? Oh, hello. That's and good so, money. That's money, that's you know what I'm saying? That's good money, Costco, that's but, good. But you know, like there were times where in that flow of it, mm. that I was getting no after no after no, and then I would say, you know what? I'm low on cash, I'm gonna go apply for Apple One mm-hmm. and be a, what is it? I haven't done it in so long, be a receptionist or apply to be something like that. And I would go to an audition and I would just release it. I did it. I actually still to this day do my auditions and I throw my sides in the trash. Really? I throw them immediately in the trash. What would you do before? Oh, I would hold on to it. I would make sure I was, you know, like, oh, I should have did this moment. Living in the past. Yeah, I can't change the past. I did what I did. Mm. Let it go. 
If it's for you, it's for you. Mm. And then I would be focused on getting another job. Then they would call me for a callback and I would get it. Or they were putting a pin in you because your energy is somewhere else. I don't know how it works, but when I give whatever is on my mind and anything around me to God, I have to trust that he has my best interest. Yeah. And so I just walk in that. If it's for me, if that door is open and it's for me, I have to believe it's actually for me. And if it's not for me, I have to believe it's not for me. So I can't be living in other people's life. Right. Because right. when I go in something and I force myself into it, girl, when you force yourself into some shit, well, <laughs> the you, joke is on you. The joke is on you. <laughs> what I read once was, if you go outside of God's will mm -hmm. to get what you want, you have to stay out of his will to keep it. Girl, who want to sign up for that? And that's one thing I do say before everything I do, your will be done. Come on. Your will, not mm -hmm. my will. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't want, if it's my will, I don't want it. Yeah, yeah. But I know whatever is in his will, it's for me. Sure, yeah. And I can receive it, the hardship. And it's nothing really that hard, because it was all a gift. Mm -hmm. It was all a lesson, it was all of it. it, was a, was something for me. And that's what, switching gears a little bit to talk about the gift, if these last past few years have been nothing short but arduous for pretty much all of us. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we don't realize sitting back that, yes, these last two years have been hell, you know, mm -hmm. but also they've been a gift. There is, God is creating, He is being creative in the commotion. There is lessons to be had in these past few years, and He uses it for His good. So with that, how do you maintain your optimism for the future looking back and knowing the things that we've been through with this pandemic? I just have to be grateful, moment to moment. That's all I can do is just live in consistent gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many people that died this year. There's so many people that lost their family members. My God, <sighs> we just have to be grateful. Mm -hmm. Grateful that we've had successes. Grateful that people are, you know, revealed friendships are revealed. Mm -hmm. You know, people are exiting out of our lives that are supposed to exit. Um, it's just so many things that we should just be grateful for, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's what keeps my optimism because if he kept me then, he'll continue to keep me now. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in the moment and I'm sitting in that space of fear and I'm like, oh my gosh, how is this all gonna work out? I wanna get married, I wanna have babies. How does, oh, how is this gonna do da, 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 da. Take a deep breath and see where you are and see where you could be. Driving here, I saw so many tents, so many people living and still, still, we're doing what we love to do. That is enough. Mm -hmm. That is enough. Mm -hmm. And I think if more people took the time to look around and see what they have and see what they should be grateful for mm -hmm. and how much of a gift that is. Yeah. What has this pandemic taught you? Oh, what has it taught me, honey, to just... <laughs> Relax. <laughs> it's funny you say relax because I, I, I was having a conversation earlier and I believe that we are in a generation. Um, we have the propensity to put this false sense of urgency mm -hmm. on everything. Mm -hmm. It's like we, urgency to do this, urgency to do that because we are looking at social media. We are yeah. wanting to compare ourselves. We are wanting to do the next thing but not realizing that the gift is in the now. The gift is in the being. the being. The gift is not in the doing, it's in the being. Mm -hmm. And so I can definitely identify with you saying just to relax because it's like, wait a minute, we've lost sight of the bigger why mm -hmm. because we're so focused on the doing as opposed to the why mm -hmm. for the doing. Exactly. So for you, it's relax. Relax, live in gratitude. Life is going life, okay? 
<laughs> okay, it's going to life. Life is going to life. life. That's good. It is. It's, life is life in right now. We can't change. What are we going to tell COVID? COVID. <laughs> Sit down, COVID. Let me go to the club real quick. You are left with choices. The choices you make mm -hmm. are what you're left with. Mm -hmm. You know, God is going to still be reigning over all of this. Yeah. He is over all of this. So it was already going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you just need to relax, have a seat. Learn your lessons, okay? <laughs> so when everything is back in order or the new order of things, you know how to operate. What has this pandemic exposed to you about your personal self? Listening. 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 Listening as far as listening in relationships, listening in Everywhere, work. everywhere. Because mm. when you, when you, you're moving so fast. You're moving so fast that you don't really take in what people need from you, what people want from you, mm. what you need to change about you. That's good for you, mm -hmm. you know? Do your own self-work. Go to therapy. Do you go to therapy? Oh, hell yeah! Yeah, I'm same. Hell I mean, yeah! I, if, I honestly, I'm like, how do people do it without it? Girl, I had two therapists in the pandemic in the, uh, in the, uh, when we was in quarantine? Listen. I had two. Listen, it's real. Honey, it's real. Because when you're sitting there and all you have are your thoughts, mm -hmm. you really got to redirect what you want to take in and what you need to throw out mm -hmm. and what you need to listen to. Mm -hmm. So I really just learned how to, and I'm still struggling with it, mm -hmm. you know, what <laughs> I need to listen to, what I'm taking in. Why you do know? you think you struggle with it? I want to do what I want to do. I want to listen to what I want. You know, it's more, <laughs> it's more like mm, moving, moving so fast, you know? And I think, um, you know, you're working and you're moving fast and then you're not and you're still working to get back to working. And what are you doing? Like, that's what everyone's question is. What are you doing next? You know, what are you, what are you, you're just so busy doing, doing. And when you sit back and you really just start listening to what you think about yourself, what other people might say or think about you, even though you're not supposed to give a fuck. <laughs> you yep. start listening. You have to be careful about what you take in and what you don't. And what you receive. And what you and receive what you and what you yes. accept. Yes. So listening, being in a new love and listening to him and his reflection of me. <sighs> Is his reflection of you constructive criticism and it's kind of like, ooh, I don't know if I could take that? Or is it more of just always loving and enduring? I mean, if it doesn't have anything constructive, like then what are you getting? You're just getting a teddy bear of love. Come on. You know, I mean, I think real relationships, friendships are mirrors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we show each other yeah. what we are. And I think if anything, this pandemic has made me and I think a lot of people around us around me to really start telling friends what they need from them. Hmm. You know, like holding them accountable. Like, I actually need you to do this for me. Hmm. Why do you think we, we didn't do that before? Because we were moving too fast. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you can't go and see and touch your friend because there's a pandemic or, you know, my friends that are moms and I can I cannot imagine having kids. I mean, and I was homeschool. Ooh. And how much you need that glass of wine in a freaking FaceTime yeah. for just three or four minutes? Yes. Yes. You know, and I be like, girl, I'm here for you. What? Let's just. Yes. What do you need? Yeah. And how that helped me, and how I know that helped my friends. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just like for us to share and be there for each other. It's. It's that tribe of love, that tribe of support that we all need. Yeah. You get back to what our parents are, you know, like what that thing was that kept us together as a village mm -hmm. of raising each other's children, of being a support, yeah. you know, a support system. And I think just being open and listening and just really leaning on the people who love you and support you. Right. Is really what it's taught me is just to love, be love, give, mm -hmm. and listen. 
And listen, so who was Brescia in 2021 and who will, will she be in 2022? She will be married in 2022. Woo! Come on. <laughs> <laughs> she will be married in she 2022. She will be married in 2022. Amen, Amen. to that. I mean, um, I love that. Yeah, just happy, more happiness. More happiness. More happiness. She was happy in 2021. I mean, God really showed up and showed out my 2021. It was actually like. <laughs> I shouldn't be so happy. During the pandemic. During the pandemic. How? God kept me. He mm. always does. But I was working. I was doing Run the World. I was in New York. You know, I was safe. Um, I was, in, I'm in love. You know, my family. I was close to my family so I could go see my family. And, and I will just... Hope that that happens this year as well, but uh, it will. It is already, yeah. praise God. It will. But, um, you know, you, you work hard to make sure that, you know, the things are opening up the way that they are, and I'm starting to see those works put into action. Now, if someone, you said you had a great 2021, you had a great year. If we look at, to the left and to the right, pretty much some people can't say that they had a great year. No. They could say that they had a host of valleys and adversities like we mentioned earlier. What word of encouragement could you give them to sustain them mm -hmm. for 2022? The only thing that I could say is remember why you're here. Mm. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. What if they don't know why they're here? Because we have been sitting with our thoughts during mm -hmm. this pandemic. We've been sitting with the self-awareness. You know, I think also one of the gifts of the pandemic is that the drama that it has brought has been an offering to self-awareness, an offering to self-awakening. But a lot of people in this self-discovery of their awareness of themselves and their awakening of themselves, some of them don't even know why they're here, but you're here. You're here, you're here. And I mean, it's a constant searching. Mm -hmm. It's a constant prayer. But you know, you just have to believe that God has a reason for every season. Mm -hmm. And through every season, if he's brought you through something, I have to go there because that's all I lean on. You have to stand on that. You have to stand on it. He's my rock, my, sh my sword, and my shield. And he walks with you. He talks to you. You have to believe that and have him reveal it to you. It's a constant search, even when I think I am where I'm supposed to be. I'm still searching. The why. Because mm -hmm. I think if you stop searching the why, then what are we here for? Because in every moment you have to see why you're of service. And I think that's where people get lost. We are here to serve. Serve. Mm. And if it is all just for, you know, to just be given into self, you know, it's just this thing that is all for what is coming to me. Like that is bull. Yeah. That is bull. There's somebody that needs you, that sees you, and that needs you to serve them. And if you can figure out that, God will reveal what the next step is. And I cannot tell you just for myself how me putting my energy and to something else has served me where I was wanting to be deposited another answer or something, or where am I supposed to be go? Like I fell into stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. I was doing drama. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like there's just so many things that I was like, well, what am I supposed to be doing now? Why am I here? What am I doing? I'm just turning in circles, you know? And then I'm putting my energy into something else where he told me to be, where I said, you know what? I'm just gonna do this right now. And I'm gonna figure this out. Oh, I'm gonna go help a friend out with this, even though they didn't ask me that. Or, you know, I'm gonna help the homeless, or I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And then something is given to me. 
So find your why in those moments, knowing that he brought you here. If you from Timbuktu, he provided a way for you to have a place yeah. to be able to pay your bills. And even if you can't pay your bills, how are you looking at this interview? You know, like there's just so many things. And if you just put yourself out there and you go, you start asking yourself why and ask him why, he will tell you. And it's not going to be like, hey, you're here because. <laughs> like, you'll be waiting forever for that. Right. But I just know in my spirit and what it has worked for me mm -hmm. is releasing it and depending on it yeah. every single moment. And ooh, when you say serve, service, my God. Serve! If we understood that service is the gateway. It's the gateway. It's the gateway to our purpose. It's the gateway. It will expose our passion. It will expose those things. But because we just, we are in a generation where we want instant gratification and we don't want to do those things that are kind of quote unquote beneath us because we just want to get there, but we don't realize in order for us to get there, we must first serve and do this. Not only because it's an act of obedience, but it's preparing us for that. The things that we learn in that will give us tools to sustain us for that. Huh? So I can fully relate to you on that. I had to meditate on it for a second. <laughs> but I was like, come on, God, down. No, you gave it. it. You gave it. But it, it is. That's it. That's it. And and I just, you know, I I I I pray that people understand that that is the gift of life is just of service. It is. We are here just to serve. Yeah, like I mean. I look at acting as a service. Come on. When I'm on set, I ask myself, how can I be of service? Because mm -hmm. when people watch a movie or they watch a TV show, they're escaping. Mm -hmm. They're going somewhere where they, they want to take a break. Mm -hmm. I'm serving them. I'm serving my crew. I'm serving, I'm keeping it light. Because you don't know where people are on any part of the day or where they are and what they're going through. You be a service. You come ready to do your job and leave. Yeah. That's serving. Here at Butta, we focus a lot on self-care. Mm -hmm. And obviously we've, these last few years have just been really, really arduous. What has been your self-care practices daily to just keep you sane? <sighs> just what I did, deep breaths. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I have to, Anxiety and all of that stuff takes a toll on your face and your body, you know, and I just try my best to just stay optimistic. Mm -hmm. And that is my self-care. You know, you can put all the serums on your body as much as possible, but when you see that beautiful, you know, aged woman that is just dancing through life, mm -hmm. I want what she got. So what are you doing? Right. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I want to smile more. I want to do all of the things that make me dance through life. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the serums and then all of the <laughs> and stuff. Then the and then you care. put the butters on and yeah. you take the bubble baths and yes. you, you do all of that. But I think it starts from the root of taking a deep breath and staying hopeful, mm -hmm. you know? Because, yeah. honey, <laughs> what you won't do is stress, <laughs> stress me out, honey. I say, do not, okay? Do not. Do not. Do so, not, okay? I will stay lifted. Right. Amen? You stay lifted. Amen. So I will stay hopeful and optimistic. Yes. Okay? Let me have a smile line. So the way you stay optimistic is releasing? Yes, releasing. Meditation, releasing. Prayer, prayer, prayer. <laughs> oh, did you pray today, Bruce? Yeah, you got to pray again. You yeah. know, just prayer and just releasing. And then all the serums. I love facial. That's why I love butter. You know, yeah. I love I love stuff on my hands because mm -hmm. you know I'd be doing too much. You know, and it's so thick. It's so thick. So, so I love I love the scrubs and. Mm -hmm. You know, I love a nice facialist, you know. Shout out to Tracy Hudson, black owned, <laughs> okay, as well. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I also have eczema, so mm -hmm. I always have to keep my anxiety down and just yeah. peace. Yeah. Don't disturb my peace or give me a wrinkle. 
Mm-hmm. Or, or else. Not. Or else, honey. Or else. He will have to be cut. <laughs> or else. He'll be cut. Keep me young, oh. Lord. Keep me young, you know? That's why I, I be asking I them. I be asking them little old ladies. I be like, what are you what doing? Do you do? What but, do you do? And, and, you know, I think, yes, we, the the serums and all that is great. But uh, er, er, thank God for it. But we don't really realize a lot of times that what people actually see and feel outwardly is before they see our skincare mm-hmm. is our spirit. They, 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 meet, they meet our spirit first. They don't meet our skin first. Right. And that comes from being inward, yes. doing the inward work. Like you said, the root as opposed to just focusing on the outward. It's, you can wear all the makeup you want. But that spirit ain't right, honey. Throw it in the tray. That's it. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Your feedback was magnificent and oh, wonderful. Oh, thank you. I just so, hope to thank you. teach one, <laughs> each one. Be blessed. Be blessed. Don't let them get you down, honey. Don't let them. <laughs>